To start up the Nikon NIE Widefield Microscope, first remove the dust cover and set to the side. Then open the component box. Press the key hole, then turn the handle to the side to open the door. Turn on the main power switch in the upper right. This will turn on all components in order. Please do not turn on or off individual components. Next, turn on the computer. Once the computer boots up, connect to your research data store using the RDS icon and enter your UniKey and password. If you incorrectly type your UniKey or password, please close and reopen the icon to start over. Leave this software open so you remember to log out of your RDS at the end of your session. Now open the NIS Elements software. Log in as user. If you have forgotten the password, it is written in the manual located on the desk. Once the software opens, check if the layout and optical configurations load correctly. If they did not or you are unsure, click on the macro button to load default OCs and load default layout. If the macro panel is missing, you can load the default OCs and default layout from the button in the left hand side toolbar. If you have your own saved OCs or a saved layout, please use the macro button to load user OCs and load user layout. The microscope should start up with a low magnification lens in place. Please switch to the 4 times or 10 times magnification if it isn't already there. Now you are ready to place your sample on the microscope stage. Before doing so, put on a pair of nitrile gloves. Use 80% ethanol and a Kim wipe to clean the stage. Dispose of the Kim wipe and gloves in the biohazard waste bin. Now place your sample on the stage, being careful to make sure it is flat. It is very easy to accidentally put the sample on at an angle, so double check to make sure it is flat. Once your sample is on the stage, Focus on the sample using Brightfield. To do this, choose the Brightfield IOC. Then use the joystick to move the sample all the way up to the top of the stage range. The 4 times and 10 times objective have a large enough working distance that the top of the stage range will not crash into the objective and break the slide. This is not true of the other lenses and the reason why we start with 4 times or 10 times. Now look down the eyepiece and start lowering the stage until your sample comes into focus. If you don't see any light down the eyepiece, first check that you chose the correct OC. Reload default OCs and make sure to choose the Brightfield Eye OC. Then make sure the lamp is turned on and the dioscopic shutter is open and the light is being directed to the eye port. You should see light on the sample. If you are doing bright field imaging, be sure to perform color illumination to optimize the condenser light path. Please see the video on color illumination. If you are doing fluorescence imaging, select the relevant OC based on what fluorophores are in your sample. Here I have chosen the default FITC OC. This OC chooses the camera light path directed to the QI2 monochrome camera. It also selects the 470 nanometer LED for excitation and the FITC filter cube. Press play on the camera. This sample is very bright. The QI2 camera has a default setting very high in gain for users with dim samples. You can lower or raise the gain using the slider. You can also adjust the exposure time on the camera or the LED power for the 470 nanometer LED 
to optimise the image. Use the lookup table to help determine when you have found optimal settings. You don't want any saturated pixels. This may be easier to see by sliding the slider next to the lookup table to change from a linear to a log scale view of the histogram. Once you have optimised your settings, you will see a red exclamation point on the FITCOC, indicating settings have been changed. Press the arrow next to the OC to save them into that OC. Then create your own group and duplicate the OC and move it into your group. Now you can reload the default OCs which will put the original settings back into FITC without changing your optimised settings in FITC1. We always recommend keeping your OC separate from the default OCs. So if you make a mistake, you can reload the default OCs using the macro button and start over. You can save your OCs using the Save User OCs macro button. Now that you have optimised your settings, press the Capture button to capture an image. To save the image, click File, then Save. Always save the ND2 proprietary format because this will save your metadata. You can also convert your image to an 8-bit TIFF and save that. But remember, when you do this, you are throwing data away. Be sure to save your OCs using the Save OCs macro button. Please save them in the user folder on the desktop and use the Load OCs macro button to reload them the next time you use the microscope.